Hello, welcome to Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park Facebook page. Today we're going to do a virtual tour of the King Birth Home, Martin Luther King Jr.'s Birth Home. So happy Martin Luther King Day. And in just a little while, we're going to start a presentation with slides where we go inside the birth home and you'll see the very place where Dr. King was born. This is being brought to you by the interpretation team rangers of Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. The National Park Service is of course the caretaker for Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. It is our duty to preserve and protect. And during this time of the COVID time, we are closed as far as our buildings, but the park itself is open as far as being able to walk around the park. So you are able to walk and see the individual places that Dr. King would have walked as a child and as an adult as he grew up in this neighborhood. Where, when, and in what era of time did Dr. King grow up? Who guided Dr. King's development? How did growing up on Sweet Auburn form Dr. King? Dr. King grew up at 501 Auburn Avenue. He lived in a Victorian home there till he was 12. A good book to read is My Brother Martin. It's written by his sister, Christine, who was born before him. Christine was Dr. King's older sister. She is really. She is still alive today. So uh, you can um, get the book from our bookstore when it reopens. Where is the birth home located? Well, this is a park map. The park map here shows the entire Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park extent. Uh, actually, I, I fudged there a little bit. We now have um, a new building as part of the park farther up Auburn to the west and um, part of that was where Dr. King actually had a radio station. Um, well, he, he participated in radio. Um, so soon we'll be able to open that building as well. But this is the main park. Now Dr. King did grow up in, on, in and on Sweet Auburn Street. That's what it was known as, is Sweet Auburn. And part of that was because of the wealth of the African-American community. Dr. King being born January 15th, 1929. These are homes near his home, Victorian as well, Queen Anne, Victorian. So these have some nice uh, kind of decor to them, scroll work and beautiful porches. Dr. King didn't just grow up in a wealthy neighborhood, though, or a middle, upper middle class. There were also shotgun homes, and um, those shotgun homes were across the street from this, his birth home. These are both two pictures of his birth home. One is before it was renovated uh, by the National Park Service, and um, the second is, of course, how it looks today. And it's meant to look exactly like it looked when Dr. King was born there, January 15th, 1929. And he lived there till he was 12 and a half. And this is the home Dr. King would have been looking out on the porch to see if he could find some friends to play with when he was just anywhere from probably five to 12 years old. Um, when he becomes 12, the family will move to another home on Boulevard a few blocks away from the birth home here, but um, that home no longer exists today. Unfortunately, it was taken when the expressway I-75 came in, the ramp took that home. There's a marker, but that second home where Dr. King lived when he went to high school no longer exists today. This is indeed his birth home, and this is the home you, when we reopen as far as the buildings, you will be able to come and tour. So. Check back on our website and uh, the National Historical Park website of Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. We're now entering the home and above the piano, you see the grandparents of Dr. King, Jenny Celeste Williams and A.D. Williams, who bought the home 1909. 
A.D. Williams also built the church that Dr. King co-pastored at. And this is where the guests would have come. Music was very important to the family and his mother, Jenny Celeste, was an accomplished piano player. And that stool you see there? Well, the children weren't as quite accomplished as mom and didn't appreciate piano lessons. It's said that Martin took a screw to that piano uh, stool and loosened the screws before the teacher came and kaplop down went the teacher. So Martin was, yes, a normal little guy that would do a couple of tricks here and there. He would hide in the bushes of the front of the lawn and pop out just to scare his neighbors. So yes, Martin was a child with normal precocious behavior. And here he is with his brothers, his brother and sister, and he is on the right, his grandmother, Jenny, and that's Jenny Celeste Williams, grandmother Jenny, his father in the middle, and his mother on the left, Alberta, Alberta King. His father, of course, Martin Luther King Sr. The next room in the house is was used as the grandparents' bedroom until A.D. Williams passed when Martin was about three years old. Then it became the family room where games would be played. It was also the office of Martin Luther King Sr. So you see the desk in the background. Guess what Dr. King, Martin Luther King Jr. rather, um, his favorite game was. He was also known as ML. Yeah, Monopoly. And that radio to the right, his favorite radio show that he would listen to would be the Green Hornet. Now the family ate dinner together every night and the next room in the house is the dining room. And you can see that they could have all the family around the table. And it was important to wait till Martin Luther King Sr., Daddy King, AKA known as Daddy King, got home from whatever type of service work he was doing as a pastor. And the family would wait and then it was a lively discussion at the dining room table while they ate dinner together each night. And those discussions may have been that his father actually helped to create a situation where teachers in Atlanta that were African-American would get equal pay. Previously, they had not. And with his work with the NAACP, he was able to uh, petition and have a lawsuit drawn. It took a while, but he was able to um, get the pay for African-American teachers equal to that of their white teacher counterparts. So Dr. King grew up in a very socially moving forward family. And guess who brought the NAACP to Atlanta? His grandfather, A.D. Williams, who bought this home. This is the room that was both Alberta and Christine's, uh, his older sister, later, her bedroom. Alberta, also the mother of the King children, um, grew up in this same birth home. So here you see Christine's bedroom with her doll. And as I said, Martin and his little brother, A.D., could be precocious at times, and they would steal her dolls away, and she said she never could keep hold of a doll, not with her brothers. As you see, um, it was quite a girl's bedroom, and it was her mother's as well. As you go up the stairs, you'll see a sewing machine in the main hall area, and Jenny Celeste was a very good seamstress, and that's the grandmother of Dr. King, and that is where she would have sewn. Sometimes the children would have slept out there in that main hall area when their room was being lent to college students that needed a place to stay as they studied in the seminary. So the family did a lot of outreach for the community as well as in sharing their home. This is the pride of the birth home. This is, of course, the birth room of where Dr. King was born. First, his sister was born here, and that would be his sister, Christine. And that drawer that is out on the left of the wardrobe is where she was laid down because she was a little bit early and she was a very small baby and they weren't quite ready yet. And they hadn't gotten the crib together yet. She was first born here at home, 
Second born at home was Dr. King, of course, Martin Luther King Jr. And then third AD, his little brother. And here's the crib. Once it was put together, the beautiful crib with the embroidery cover. So all three children were born at home. The reason they were born at home is not quite as pleasant of a story. At that time, hospitals were segregated and Dr. King and his wife were not going to have their children born in a not equal hospital uh, maternity ward. So instead they paid to have a nurse or a doctor present um, when the children were born at home. Martin and his brother A.D. had their very own bedroom. It was the next one down the hall, the last one at the corner of the house, the back corner of the house. And Martin and his brother loved to play baseball. They often played it with their uncle that was really closer in age to them than he was to his own brother, Martin Luther King Sr. So the youngest brother of Martin Luther King Sr. was like a brother to Martin and A.D., although he was truly their uncle. And he often helped in uh, leading baseball games that were played directly behind the house. So that was a favorite game outside. Uh, we talked about earlier that they played, of course, uh, Monopoly inside in the game room downstairs. And they also had a little hiding area in this room. You don't really see it. It's across from the bed that I think maybe Martin sometimes pretended he was the Green Hornet and was deciding what heroic acts he would do for the day. So one of those acts we know is he actually ran all the way down the hall one day where there was an open window at the far end, must have tripped and jumped out and started to fall. And where you see him as an adult there, he probably was dangling from the gutter and his father came out and saved the day and he didn't fall all the way. So Martin had a few close calls in this beautiful birth home. You're looking at the back of the birth home in the upper left picture. Martin did have chores to do, and one of them was to help Grandma Jenny in the garden. And uh, that garden is not there at this point, but maybe someday in the future we'll reintroduce that. Um, and then on the right, you see Dr. King revisiting his birth home as an adult. And there's a clearer photo of that picture. Um, so he has been an adult at this point with children of his own, probably already been to Montgomery, leading the Montgomery boycott and pastoring at Dexter Avenue Church and having his first few young children. Um, when he comes back to Atlanta, he will co-pastor with his father because he is such a desired, needed, and inspirational leader of the civil rights movement. He divides his time as a co-pastor to Ebenezer Baptist Church and as a leader of the civil rights movement. And here we see Dr. King in the church. Um, maybe this picture is of Dr. King as a young child, um, listening to his father. That's what I like to think. And of course, this comes from Christine Ferris's book, His Older Sister. So I think she might be the one in the pigtails there with the pretty yellow dress. And maybe that's Grandma Jenny and at the pulpit, Daddy King. So uh, My Brother Martin is the name of that book. I, I think it's a great one to, to buy and uh, share with your family and friends. So thank you for joining us today. That was a whirlwind tour of Dr. King's birth home on Martin Luther King Day 2021. You can go to our Parks Face page and see other tours, more detailed tours of walkthroughs of the actual birth home. Uh, I know there's one there by my fellow Ranger, Ranger Carr, Holloman, and there are also other tours. So take a chance, I mean, take the time and look at our website, at our Facebook website, go to more and look at all the other videos. Now, if you want to make a birth home card of your own and send it for somebody or give it to somebody for Martin Luther King Day, 
Here's an idea of how to make a birth home card for a friend or family member. So what you're going to see next is a cardboard box, and it's really just a cereal box. And what you really are doing is you're cutting out windows and cutting out the form of the birth home. And then you're able to draw on that cardboard or add pretty cutouts of paper. And then when you open the windows and the, the doorways of those cutouts, you can actually put pictures of yourself or of Dr. King behind those cutouts. So that's a little craft you might want to do for Martin Luther King Day. It's just a, a good way to celebrate Dr. King's birth on January 15th, 1929. We were very fortunate last year to have someone with us, and he actually was our guest speaker at the Legacy Campout this past year, 2020. Unfortunately, during 2020, we lost a couple of icons of the civil rights movement. And one of those icons was Congressman John Lewis. So um, we miss him but we were appreciative of our time with him and we wanted, we wanted to share a little of our uh, time with him in images that we dearly cherish. Happy Martin Luther King Day and I hope to see you on the park not in the not too distant future. Goodbye.